Parts. Hey, thanks for coming by the studio today and hanging out with me. I thought today we would work on some collage. And if you are new to our channel, I want to thank you right away for all your thumbs up, for your likes, for your um, shares, um, for your subscriptions. Thank you so much for that. If you are new, my name is Katarina Giglio. My friends all call me Kat. And um, I am a professional mixed media artist and I'm represented by a gallery in Fort Collins, Colorado. And by the way, if you're interested, you can take a uh, gallery tour on FaceTime. You can make an appointment for a FaceTime visit and see everything in the gallery. And we have free shipping in the US. And that information is always up here on our blog posts and it's in the information down below too in the comments section. So today we're gonna work on collage and I thought we would do a three part series. I thought we would do paper today, which is a huge topic. We're just gonna just barely touch on it today. Um, and then um, next time we meet, we're going to be doing fabric and paper together. So we're gonna get fatter and thicker and work on more dimension. And then the last one will be collage on assemblage. And I actually got my start in mixed media doing three-dimensional pieces uh, of found art and shrine work. So it's gonna be fun to go back and revisit that. So can't wait. Well, let's get started. So this is what we're gonna be working on today. This is our substrate and it is a Fabriano paper. It's 22 by 30, so it's a really big sheet of paper. I love them because uh, they've been making paper uh, since the 13th century. They really know what they're doing. It's a really good quality product and I like cutting them down into smaller pieces. Um, they make wonderful little books and all kinds of things. So, um, so this is what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna cut it into smaller pieces and uh, then we're going to prime the paper. Okay, so we've cut down two smaller pieces and I have uh, used a pencil and um, a ruler to measure about two inches on either side. Um, and that is because we're using, we're doing collage and so we're gonna create a hole from parts. And then we're gonna use glue to glue to the paper, which is what collage means, to glue in French. Uh, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, use some uh, gesso on one and then I'm gonna use paint on the other and that's gonna prime the paper. Um, now you don't have to prime the paper, but I like doing it. And I've noticed that some of my older pieces have lifted up just slightly, that's not a good thing. So we wanna make sure you get a really good connection and we're gonna prime our paper. Um, and of course, all the ingredients that I'm using today, you can get on our Amazon links, just in the comment section below. And um, so you can pick up, um, gesso and PVA and everything that we're using. And um, so I'm just going to use clear gesso on this. And, uh, and you could work all the way to the end of the paper if you like, um, but I just, uh, I thought it, I would leave the edge and have a bigger piece of paper to work with. Um, now you don't need a whole lot of clear gesso, but um, but you do want to get a, a good nice prime on there and you know how if you use clear gesso like I do It has that wonderful gritty kind of texture. So it really holds really well Okay, I'm going to use raw umber, you know how I love raw umber and I love having a dark color um, as my base um, and so you just need a little bit of paint and a little bit of water we're just going to spread it out and um, it's going to create not only a prime but a nice dark background so that if anything is showing um, we're going to have this dark brown underneath so you don't have to use every single bit of collage paper that you have we just we're going to tell a story and so um, and, and we don't know what that story is going to be right now. We're just going to have to figure that out after we look at the bits. And I've got all kinds of bits to show you today because don't we love looking at other people's wonderful bits, collage pieces? I do, I know. I love, I love looking at other people's things. Okay, we're going to let these dry and then we'll come right back. 
Okay, I have all kinds of really good things here. And to be honest, I really had to narrow it down a bit because you know, you know, you know, you understand, you get it, right? So I've got um, just plain old pieces of um, book text. And I have some little yummy bits of, uh, of uh, tissue papers and handmade paper. And I've got some bits here. This is sea, the seashore and different uh, shells and things. Those are cool. And I have these um, handmade marble papers, which are super yummy. And then I've got all kinds of, uh, let's see. There's a winged creature that should, it's in the wrong section, should be with winged things, but oh, there are winged things under here. That's where it belongs with the winged things. And then we've got this stuff here, which is yummy too. And a really cool uh, bird print back there. So we've got all of that, and I've got these bits, which you gotta have bits because they fill in the blanks, right? And then um, all of these pieces, I just L-O-V-E love this sad little envelope that's all ripped to pieces, it's yummy. More bits, another cool envelope, another cool envelope. I guess this is all supposed to be together, oh well. Um, and this really old paper, lots of different kinds of text, handwritten and then paper text. So we've got lots of those things to play with. And then of course our painted papers. I've got a bunch of those. This is just a few of my stash. Okay, and then the other things I've got are um, all of my prints. Some of these are resists, but then I love this one. And all of these, these are all mono prints and monotypes. Um, and I just pulled a bunch of them out to use, cut pieces to put in. Because if you use just all the same thing, if I use all antique bits, which I absolutely love and adore, but if I used it all, it would be so, so boring. So you have to use a lot of different things to tell your story. Okay, so this is the part that takes a long time because you have to decide what you really love, okay? Um, and what is speaking to you in the moment. Um, not trying to, you know, just, just looking at the stuff and just saying, okay, I absolutely love this. Um, I love this old written page. So I'm gonna set that aside. And this one, and I L-O-V-E love that. Okay, so that's, that's good, I like that stuff. Um, and, and the whole point is that you just um, allow, you know, whatever's speaking to you just to say, you know, I, it's okay, you know, take this piece. And if it doesn't work out, you know, cover it up. It's like no big deal. <clears throat> and we have lots of time right now so we can make all kinds of fabulous things. I like all of this, so we're just gonna put that in our save pile. And then let's look at papers. I love this one. That's pretty. I like this brown thing too. This old piece. That's kind of yummy. Yeah, I'm not sure about these. Not really feeling it there. And then these. Okay. I love the pink, but I don't know. I like the blue. Mm, I like that blue too. Okay, so. We're through that. Okay, what else do we like? I like this roll of paper, but I also like this one here. So I could go really bright red. You know, I think we're gonna do a beach theme. I was thinking we were gonna do maybe birds or butterflies, but we both really miss the beach right now. So I'm thinking that that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna get I'm not going to use these, I don't think. I'm going to get my starfish. Yeah. And these guys. Okay. All right. Now I have an idea of where we're going with this. I can put this aside, those little bits, and see if we need that later. Okay, so I'm going to 
cut a few of these pieces out. I love this one, isn't that yummy? That's pretty cool. Okay, <clears throat> I do love this one. I think I'm going to use it for the other piece and do a beach theme on one because this one, I think I wanna do something on Italy and I think I'm gonna turn it this way. I think um, we'll do it vertically and um, maybe use this envelope and some of these other bits and see what, position these on the paper and then see what I, what I like about it. So, um, you know, we should be in Italy right now. We should be sipping Prosecco. Um, Italians should be happy and healthy and walking around. So yeah, I'm going to use this old Italian envelope. We're going to do something with that. We're going to do something with the papers. I'm going to play around with it and see what I like. Okay, so I'm just playing here. And um, you know, you can take a picture of your collage. You can get it all worked out the way you want it and then take a picture of it so that, you know, with your iPhone or your, your, t your, your phone or your, you know, your tablet, whatever. Um, one of the things I like to do is to, if I find that I like something, is just give it a quick little a dab of not a whole lot because <laughs> of glue stick and kind of keep it in place. I, I kind I kind of like the way the envelope, this old Italian envelope, is looks here. Um, but just a little bit to hold it in place and decide where you want it to go, um, so that you don't lose it. Let's see if that'll stay. There we go. Okay. And I like this. I, instead of using a whole envelope, which is what most people do, and just putting it down, um, you know, this is, you know, in bits, so, but you can still tell it's an envelope. You still have that story. And what you create when you do a collage is you're, you're making a brand new story using pieces, um, you know, pieces to come together and make a whole. Okay, so I know I want more writing. I don't think I'm going to use that piece. I like that, but I don't know. But, ooh, two pages. I thought it was just one page. That's pretty cool. Um, I think I want some writing to stick out of that envelope, too. So a piece like maybe this. I know you're going to freak out when you see me just rip this apart, but... So this is, that looks cool. That looks really cool. Okay, so now the story that's going on in my head is that this is the information that came in the envelope, okay? And then we're going to use, because it's starting to get really brown here, so, although I do love this piece, I'm not gonna use this one. Okay, so. Okay, I like this, and I like this and this. I think this is so cool how it edges it. And I love the background coming through. Isn't this yummy, the way it dried? And, uh, and we lifted up some of the paint so it wouldn't be quite so dark. I like the blue with this. The pink looks good too. That, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Okay, how about blue for a blue sky? That's kind of yummy. Ew, I like that. Maybe this one instead. Nope. This one might do it. It's kind of dark about this side. So now you know why you have to have painted papers because they add this wonderful element um, and you know all different kinds of elements. Um, this is probably going to be too dark. Yeah, it takes it to a whole different place. I don't think I want that. Um, and if we're using tissue paper, that's just gonna melt into the background, that color anyway. That's just too much. I'm not using those. Okay. But maybe a little more text. Okay. I like this piece. Let's see what this looks like underneath here. 
And I feel like I want to tell this story this way. Okay. I love the composition of this because this points up um, and this covers it. This I'm just going to rip. I'm trying to decide which side I like. I think I might like this middle piece, so we're going to do the middle piece. I think just like that. Okay, so now we have a blue sky. That looks pretty cool. And I think we're going to cut this. Actually, we're going to we're going to rip it so we have another rip edge, just like that. Okay. All right. So just working and playing with your composition and deciding. Um, where everything's going to go and then we're going to glue it down. And today I'm going to use PVA glue. I like this too. So we might come back with a piece of this going this way or this way. Yeah, we'll see whether we like that or not. We don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, so I'm just going to use my little chipboard brush and we're going to glue it down. Okay, I'm really glad that we tack the envelope down and um, I'm just using this little tiny brush. Now you could use gel medium too. Um, I like using this PVA and, and I love this white edge here. That's what made me think that we might want to pull in a little bit of this white paper. It's a little whiter. Um, in some way, maybe a square or something, um, to go there. And of course, I'm going to go on top. I'm going to glue it on top. And glue that down, glue this down. Okay, so I have this. It's starting to dry. It's getting there. It's still a little tacky. Um, and, you know, the wrinkles will smooth out once it dries. Um, so I'm just going to cut this antique um, paper. It's um, handwritten, which is pretty yummy. I love, I love antique handwritten stuff. All these wonderful old documents. Um, I like adding that little touch of white in here somehow. And... Um, not quite sure what I want to do with it, but we just want to put in a tiny piece and, and leaving lots of space in this piece because I want this piece to be, to tell its own story. Just, um, you know, it, it's, it can stand on its own. It could be framed. Um, you know, I have this, this um, edge here so that it, it's a frameable piece. We can erase the pencil lines later. Um, and then, um, so working on this as, as a little story. And in the next one, we're going to work on a theme and it will tell a story too. But the plan is to make a master board or a motherboard and to, um, to, to cut that up and use it for other pieces. So that's gonna be fun too. So I'm thinking it should go like right about here. And that would be good. So we're going to tack that down and see what we think about it. I like the number 18 on there. Let's, but you know what? I want it to be just a little straighter. There we go. That looks better. Okay. So maybe right there, we'll see how we like that. Okay. I really like the way this turned out. That little pop of blue. Um, I think is just really yummy and of course this will dry nicely so we're gonna set this aside we're gonna start on the other one okay the second piece with the gesso background um, I think we're gonna do this horizontally and this is gonna be our master board I think of it as a motherboard because it gives and gives and gives so you can cut it up into lots of different pieces and there are times when I'll do a collage and I think I only like this piece here I just cut that out and use it on something else so you could use a viewfinder to see what you like you know you could use um, just use your fingers to view it and or you could use a, an old mat board to see what you like if you can't just focus on you know one particular thing or something just doesn't just jump out at you okay and this one we had decided okay we're gonna make beach scene for this one so I have all these wonderful old um, natural history things I think we're gonna cut that out 
I love this and I have more of that paper so we can cut this up and I love the little um, red coral on here in French which is yummy um, I like that piece too this is kind of good too I like that color um, and then these bits okay so now this is where you have to save all your stuff this was a soap uh, a little tiny gift soap um, and this was the packaging on it and I thought oh I have to keep that so we're going to use that in our in our little um, our collage now I wouldn't use this in something I was going to sell this is just a collage for me and perhaps I'll put it into um, my art journal pages or something because this is obviously professionally done so just using a few pieces for this um, little motherboard or master board whatever you want to call it that we're creating um, is fine but um, but if I were going to be doing it to put in my gallery I probably wouldn't you know I, I know I wouldn't use it I would use these antique bits and I would use some other pieces I would use hand you know handmade pieces um, but I wouldn't use that okay so here we go we're gonna start cutting a few things up and playing with a composition and deciding what we like you know what we're gonna paper the background first let's do that first. okay so we've got some book pages and I'm just gonna be laying those down and um, I've already uh, put my PVA down a nice layer of PVA now I'm just following my um, guides my little um, pencil guideline which you don't have to do like I've said you could just go all the way to the edge of the paper um, so and you can put them any way you want um, I'm just papering it so that we have paper on the background because in the other piece we had the paint in the background and that that created that yummy look so that if you don't see it so that if you do see the background, you've got something wonderful to look at. I think we'll paste this one here. We'll just poke it in here. That will be good. Okay, got the background on here and it's almost dry. You can still see it's just slightly warped, just a little bit damp, but it's not tacky. So um, we're just gonna start cutting a, a few things out or ripping. I'm going to cut this one and then we can always rip it later. I like this little piece of coral. And when you're creating one of these boards, you want to use small pieces. Of course, I'm thinking about using this in the center, but I'm going to cut it down so that um, I'm going to, and I am going to save this piece because look how yummy that is with those spots, all that foxing. That's just gorgeous. Uh, and I can use that in another piece or even perhaps you know in this one we'll see I think we're going to get rid of that sky because that's just space taking up a lot of space a lot of a whole lot of space I love this color I think that's really pretty I don't know where that's going to go and I love this that's pretty cool too um, I like this with the bridge those colors are great with this. And then these, maybe these, and then some of these. Definitely the starfish, don't you think? I think the starfish for sure. Okay, we're gonna cut that one out. Okay, so I'm just playing with my collage, trying to decide where I want things to go. Just moving things around bit by bit. And I'm not sure about this piece. and how much I want to use. Um, we're just gonna keep playing with it, but I like this tag, I think. But I, we're gonna just rip it apart because we can save this piece for something else. There's no point in having that. But maybe that would go there. We'll see. We have to just keep playing with it and um, just cutting a few things up. Okay, so I have kind of an idea of where I want everything to go. Well, not everything. Let's be honest. I don't know. I'm just playing uh, 
on camera. I'm playing. I don't know where it's going really. I know I want this piece here in the center. That's for sure. I love this color with these guys. Um, I may cut that in half because I want to use all these little tiny bits so that we can cut it into different pieces. Um, so that's the plan and um, I'm thinking that's going to go about there. Um, I'm not sure about this little piece, although I love the little name here. So we're going to set that aside because I want to remember where that is. Love this guy. Got to figure that one out, but he's going to have to have his own background, right? So I'm going to keep playing with this and tacking a few pieces down. And see how it goes. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, I decided to add some tissue papers and I added, um, I had this one which looks like sand to me, but it's just way too thick and there's no point in, we already have the background in. So I decided to use this one with the little hairs in it, which I absolutely love. And that's going to um, pull everything together. Um, it's a unifying agent. And uh, since we're not going to use any more um, any paint, um, I love the way the little star goes here. And we'll probably put that under there because I want the star to really show up. Um, and I think I like this guy over here. He's kind of a bold black and white um, look. Um, and he brings all the other little black and white elements in. So we're going to finish gluing this down and we're almost done and we're going to show you the end result. Okay, we're glued down and mostly dry. It's still a little bit damp in places, but now I'm going to cut it all to pieces. And I know I can hear a collective gasp or maybe a sigh or something, or maybe you already knew that this was exactly what I was going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the edge because you know I can make little books out of this paper so I'm saving that because we save everything in the studio right so I'm just gonna cut this up all the way around and we'll be right back so I'm using my old um, trusty paper cutter it's probably been through so many schools um, and so many kids used it but look it's just fabulous I still love it okay so we're going to try to get a few pieces out of here, several pieces to use. And I've already decided that if we get to travel into the Caribbean um, or the Bahamas or something, wouldn't that be lovely? I'm going to use this for a travel journal, which will be so cool. Okay, so I have all these wonderful little bits now. And I want that starfish to stand out, so we're just going to cut it right here. Okay. And this fabulous tag. And this piece here. Okay. And I think we can get another piece right there, right about. Let's cut that one in half because I really like this piece of coral. Okay, so I've got all these pieces and they're going to be wonderful in a new travel journal. So cool. Well, we're almost at chow for now. I had a really good time making all these little bits, dreaming of another trip to the Caribbean or the Bahamas and just... Uh, knowing that someday that will manifest. And then my Italian piece, um, you know, every, every picture tells a story. Every piece of art that an artist creates is a narrative that went on in the artist's mind. Whether you know it or not, you're creating a new story. And for me, the envelope tells the story that's inside the envelope of this beautiful place that we call Italy. And um, this to me is like putting this dream on paper to manifest in another wonderful trip. And as you can see, we are both 
healthy and happy. We send you all our love and we can't wait to see you next time. We'll be doing um, collage on fabrics and with fabrics and papers and um, we're gonna have so much fun. So until then, ciao for now.